Welcome to Decoding the Code, the YouTube show for developers. Get ready for your host, Mark Backus. Hello and welcome everyone to Decoding the Code. Um, today we are going to talk about is your idea worthless without execution? We want to dig a little bit into the dig a little bit into that. And for that, we have uh, Stefan Natter here today. Hello, Stefan. Hi. Stefan is a software developer and company founder based in Austria. And yesterday, we are going to talk a little bit about this uh, concept. So tell me, Stefan, a little bit about uh, yourself. You recently founded a, your own company. Can you tell us a little bit what your company is about? Yes. So first of all, thanks for having me. Um, it's, a, it's a great honor and pleasure. So yeah, uh, I founded a company in, uh, in January this year with two of my friends. Uh, it's nice. called Marcant Digital. Um, and uh, we develop unique solutions for remarkable brands. That's uh, our selling point. Nice. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, we're we're selling, or what I say, we're a software engineering as a service company. So um, when you have an idea, uh, we you know follow you or help you to develop the idea, create a concept, uh, bring it to the market, and scale it and find customers. Nice. Uh, Whole and package. <laughs> yeah, whole package. And even if I call it software engineering as a service, uh, it includes also UI, UX, uh, growth hacking, and other services. Everything but I really nice. like the like the name uh, because everybody's talking about SaaS uh, businesses, and I thought, hey, let's call it software engineering as a service. <laughs> That's nice. A little fun fact for uh, <laughs> for our for what for our viewers and uh, listeners. I used to live in the same town that Stefan lives in uh, when I was studying for five years in Austria, uh, but we never met, um, <laughs> which is strange because the town is so small. <laughs> uh, yeah, it is. It, it's, I, it's so funny, yeah, but we will, I think we will definitely meet one day. <laughs> yeah, that's that's on my bucket list, man. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Okay, um, so yeah, um, this is your idea worthless without execution. This is seems like a simple question, but I think there's a little bit more to it. We have to peel the onion here a little bit, and uh, it's a little bit more complicated. So um, let's talk about the value of an idea. When you have an idea, like do SaaS X, um, what what does that mean for you when when you have the idea? What value do you uh, do you give that if you have an idea? So um, there is this famous quote from from Steve Jobs that he said: "To me, ideas are worth nothing unless executed. They are just multiplayer. Execu execution is worth millions." Uh, and that summarizes it for me: um, what the value of an idea is, because the idea itself doesn't generate any money. So if you have an idea, you haven't earned anything. So I mean, uh, many of us had similar ideas like Airbnb or like, you know, uh, <laughs> Shopify, Spotify, whatever, but only some people executed it and, and founded a company. Um, and and that's what, what I had to realize in the past uh, that uh, what the value of an idea is uh, and what what led us to this topic uh, today when we started discussing uh, some things about ideas. Um, All right. You, you, you talked about uh, execution, so uh, idea yeah. times execution. But are there yeah. other things that are important for the end result? Uh, other than uh, just the idea and the execution, are there, is there more to it? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, the 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 thing you mentioned, uh, there is a great book from Derek Silvers um, where he mentioned this this uh, this ideas times execution um, for as a as your indicator for the value of an idea. Uh, and behind execution, as you said, there is more. There is uh, you know you need a team, uh, you need the right technology. Uh, the right credibility so that you're you know you're an expert in that field you know what you're doing uh, you need certain skills you need to invest a certain uh, effort um, also luck luck is also part yeah. of the equation um, uh, and so that that's that's what in the end uh, distinguish between an idea that's worth nothing nothing because one part of the multiplication is zero uh, so 
So don't get me wrong here. Every idea has a value, but when you don't execute it, it's like value X multiplied by uh, with zero is zero. Uh, yeah, that's... Yes, yes. So we are talking here about like you have this idea and um, if it just sits there not being executed, it's you can talk to people about it and they might find it interesting. Uh, but if you if you don't like do it, <laughs> you, you you might miss out on the journey of your lifetime. And yes. um, eventually, like so many ideas just die for like great ideas die for not being executed. So you have the idea and then if you don't execute it, it dies. So at the end, it doesn't have a value in, in that case. Uh, yeah. Taking out of, of the equation here, the um, patents and all, the, like that's a different story. We are talking like about yeah. ideas that, <laughs> that uh, like SaaS, uh, everything yeah. that's software or most that is software. There's also like some software that is like really high end and uh, yeah. patent worthy and like algorithm stuff. But I'm, I'm talking here about simple SaaS platforms. Like you find tutorials everywhere. Like, oh yeah, yeah we built Airbnb in five days or we built <laughs> Uber in the weekend. Um, yes. Yeah, because the technological side of those uh, startups, of those, those companies isn't that complicated. The most complicated thing is probably technologically wise is uh, scaling. Yes. <laughs> that doesn't have to do anything with the idea. Um, yeah. So yeah, um, fun fact about scaling, uh, uh, so, so that I don't forget it. Um, uh, so you, don't scale too early. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm to we're talking about this later, but I, I want to make sure that I don't forget it. Uh, there, there, I have a fun story there. Uh, uh, there was a startup uh, where I helped, uh, um, you know, getting the, the startup on track and, and, and onto the market. And they set up 10 servers already without having oh. lots of customers. So they invested a lot in, you know, being ready to scale and, and being ready for millions of users, but they didn't have users. So, yeah. Yeah, that's oh, back in the day when I was pursuing the entrepreneurship road, what what my mentor told me, like, um, or I, like I asked him, what, what if I get like 10,000 users? And he's like, you know what? That's a problem, but it's a happy problem. Like yes. you will figure it out. You will scale when yes. when the time is when the time comes. If you have like a, a whole server farm for five users, like you you're giving away money for free for yes, like not using it, not getting anything out of it. Take it as a validation when you have when you have that problem that uh, that the first few yeah. customers uh, bring your service down. You know that's yeah. as I said, happy problem. You know, take yeah, it as yeah. a happy. Th then you're going in the right direction, right? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, <it> crashes. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. Yeah. So yes, um, what I see often on Twitter and also other people like like in my life that are like, oh yeah, I have this idea. And I, I don't want to talk about it. So I, I can tell a little anecdote without telling too much. Um, the CEO of a company that I work for, he, he invited me to dinner and he was like, hey, listen, I have the idea. You can't tell anyone. You can't even tell your wife. Like, listen, I, and then he explained me the idea and, and it was a great idea, but Definitely not unique. It already existed in many places and um, it wasn't that far-fetched. But uh, what do you think when people like hoard their ideas and just keep it to, them, to themselves, um, what happens then? Um, the first thing is they, they lose, they lose, you know, as you said in the beginning, uh, they don't take the opportunity to make their business or take their business out there and, and turn it into reality because they hoard it. They, they, you know, they, they don't allow the idea to grow um, because what, what many people don't realize is that you, you're just the, the first person that starts thinking about the idea. But as soon as you start, you know, talking with the first customers, with other people, uh, with, you know, potential investors and everything, you get new aspects, you get new input yeah. that enriches your idea that makes it even bigger or, uh, adds more potential to it. 
Uh, so instead of you know keeping it for yourself because you can't know everything, you can't you, you don't know everything about even about your own yeah. idea. You um, and you may, miss a lot of potential there. I mean, VCs, there's a reason why VCs don't sign in NDAs because they don't have the time to execute it themselves. Uh, yeah. So, you know, there's a reason for that. Not everyone can execute your idea just because you tell them. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. And, and, and even if you do, um, when, you, when you think about idea um, uh, multiplied by execution, even if you tell someone, you, Mark, and I, we're different. We execute ideas totally different. So even if you, if, yeah. if the idea is the same, even if we take one idea and say, okay, we both start with it, the result will be totally different. Yeah, and, and it can be so many factors, right? It can be like yeah. your personal, like your, we talked a little bit earlier um, yeah. about the, the why, like your, when you have an idea, your why, like, uh, by the way, like this book, Start With the Why by Simon Sinek, <laughs> awesome a great book. read. Uh, or if you're yes. interested in entrepreneurship. So the why basically is why you do something, like um, the purpose behind it. Like I want to like solve this and this problem because it, it, it affects me in this and this way. So yeah, you, you have, when you have an idea, you have this why. And if, if you share the idea and someone else implements it, they don't have the why. So first they don't have the same drive yes. to the idea that you have. You, they don't have the same... Uh, maybe even like the, the same direction, just the general idea. So, um, yeah. Also yeah, the vision. Like, yeah, you know, exactly. Exactly. You, you, ha you have a, you have a different, everyone has a different vision for their idea. And that's where, uh, where you're going to, where you're heading to. Right. And, and even if we share the same basic knowledge or understanding of the idea, we have different visions. You know, I want to do yeah. that with the idea. You want to do that with the idea. And and there is there is enough space on the market because there is another aspect here why why some people don't tell it um, uh, is is also they are afraid that either either uh, they are giving away shares of the market um, or they are afraid that um, um, yeah let's talk about first about the market because the other thing is some you know pr uh, other things about fear why why they don't share it um, so let's 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 start, first start with the market so. Don't be afraid that when you share ideas that that you give away too many shares because there is enough space. When you when you start yeah. googling for you know let's say uh, uh, Shopify alternatives or there are lots of alternatives, you know you know and then you don't need to be the biggest player in the market. You know yeah. you you can you can earn still a lot of money if if that's what you're going for uh, when you are not the number one player in your market. Uh, there is enough space. So, uh, yeah, like we are how many seven point, how many billion people on the planet? <laughs> and like, like, if you just get like one million, like a very small per per percentage yeah. of those, you have like a, a very successful business. Yes. So, yes. Yeah. And, like, and sorry, go ahead. No, no, I just wanted to say it. it yeah, I understand that it's very counterintuitive to tell your super cool, uh, <laughs> like secret idea to people. But like at the end, people d don't really care all that much, <laughs> no, probably no. about your idea. And even if they did, like nobody ha who has the time to implement, like implementing an idea, it's very hard because, like, yes. Stefan, you probably know uh, best. Like you program this, okay. But there's so much more to it. What else yeah. uh, is to uh, it than just coding something? Yeah, yeah. You need to get customers. I mean, the, the thing about the idea is it's just, you know, it's an uh, 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 just a pitch. It's, you know, it can be one, two, three sentences, sentences, and that's it. You don't have customers. You don't, you need to get customers. Uh, uh, you don't have investors, whatever. And as you said, uh, there is so much work to do it and not everybody is ready to drop whatever they are doing just to execute your yeah. idea because you told them your idea that's uh, not how it works yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, at least that's uh, like I, I i know that this might be considered a little bit gatekeepy and uh, i just yeah. want to like if you are like if you think that uh, like yeah like i have an idea but it's worth worth something even if i don't execute it um, I won't fight you in that, but um, no. Yeah, I personally, I personally, and I also think uh, Stefan 
things that it's better to share yeah. it because your idea can can it can just grow like the the probability that someone will steal it from you it's extremely marginal in my yes. opinion and and i mean um when when we're talking about uh you know telling others take a look at twitter's build in public think about that yeah. so many people build stuff in public and they're not afraid of doing that yeah. because they understand that the value of building stuff in public is that you get instant feedback uh from others uh, uh you get you know you get to know things about your customers already because they tell you they tell you up front yeah. hey that's amazing what you built hey think about that 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 and that um and and many people do that book writers uh software engineers other people in of, of other industries so there's definitely something to it building stuff in public and telling others about your idea ah uh, one thing i i i also want to add to the to the uh um don't be afraid of or why people don't share ideas in public because i read a great article about it um there is also something about you know fear of um failure so so why some people don't want to share the ideas because they're they're fear of rejection so if you share your idea um you know people could reject your idea and that's that could be demotivating yeah. right um there is also fear of of not being successful i mean we you know yeah. that's not a good feeling at all so that's what also people what also uh, helps people back to tell you something about it um uncertainty because as soon yeah. as you tell someone it's uncertain it's going to succeed yeah right you have the first idea like oh this this going to work well this this going to you know be huge and then you tell someone and and then it's uncertain if 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 it still works uh and also fear of being judged you know as you see, as soon as you share the idea you're giving something away of you as a you know as like hey this was my idea i i'm totally uh, think this going to work and other people will judge you and and that's that's something that people also or that holds people back telling ideas to others i just yeah, want to well that. yeah i think the um the probability of like being successful with a saas or with a startup is is pretty small like yeah. like it's it's not that like not every company becomes this like unicorn uh company that, that makes like billions of of dollars yeah. um like it, it's very easy to fail because uh, not enough perseverance not enough money not enough uh yeah customers uh, yeah. and uh, r r not a right uh, product market fit and and so on or so you're yeah, just, or so you're just unlucky or you're just unlucky or uh bad timing you mentioned yeah. timing earlier oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> so uh, before we started um you you, you told a little uh, anecdote about uh timing <laughs> for an idea you had like four or five years ago can you tell can you tell the story again i, I like yeah that sure story. sure uh i mean funny enough we talked about that on on clubhouse uh, uh the other day <laughs> Uh, so yeah, it was about four or five years ago. I, I can't remember exactly, but you can see it on Product Hunt. Uh, a friend of mine, my early mentor, and in, in, in when I joined the startup world, uh, and I, we launched a company uh, called Squabble, uh, the Twitter phone, uh, and we were too early because the idea was similar to Clubhouse and Spaces. What you see now is that that. Uh, a, a number of people talk to each other and they're listeners and they can join they can we had the idea that they can upvote the speakers so we also had ideas for a competition you know that they're like th uh, this uh these battles because there there are certain um clubs where they do this this you know battles where they uh, try to to tell better stories or whatever uh and we launched it four or five years ago and we were, were too early so we just had to wait a, a few years and then it would succeed probably yeah probably because yeah. you never yeah. know <laughs> yeah maybe the, the technology the technology wasn't just there yet like maybe like no. internet wasn't just quite fast enough for uh, for uh nice audio transmissions and yeah and also for clubhouse i think it was like yeah timing but like also like luck like elon musk yeah tweeted about it yeah. or wrote, like talked about it and yeah okay yeah like if, if you have that like you have instant success like with everything yeah, sure. he touches or even looks at <laughs> <it> becomes <laughs> successful 
Yeah, there is elonstocks.com. There is this, uh, there is this <laughs> website uh, where you get alerts when he mentions a, a startup or anything other, anything <laughs> that, that you can, you know, invest into stocks. Yeah, one thing I learned, I learned uh, back then uh, when we're talking about timing is people back then didn't understand the idea. You know, they, they, you know, they didn't, they did not see the value of that, right? Because back then. Uh, it was like, why, why should people, you know, discuss this live online? Hmm, I don't know. And in the when Corona started, everybody was at home, so we had to deal with new, you know, new new things, new aspects yeah. in our life. And suddenly, it was normal to, you know, have online meetings or be on Clubhouse, talk to others. Yeah. It was, you know, uh, and and that was also bad luck back then because. Uh, uh, it was not part. It was not something that people get used to back then. It was like ah, I don't know, <laughs> could this work? I don't know. Yeah. yeah, even now, if you explain like the idea of Clubhouse, like people tell you, okay, it's a phone. <laughs> yeah, it, or it's radio. A, it's a phone. <laughs> yeah, it's a phone or a radio, like or podcast. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, it's um yeah, so 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 yeah, I mean that that's why sometimes you have to hold ideas back, not in terms of not telling someone, but keep it in a shelf, keep it ready when the timing is right. So sometimes it's better to wait uh and not you know start immediately because um uh, as we were too early. Um and sometimes it's it's uh better to start now. So there is this, you know, yeah. um Difficult thing to get the right timing or to have a feeling yeah, for right like timing. um like Steve Jobs uh, had they had the uh, the iPad so early and they didn't launch it because they yeah. said people are not ready for this let's make a yeah. phone and we yeah. all know how that turns out and they yeah. launched it I don't know like three four five years later and yeah. it was a huge success yes exactly. Um, yeah, I also find that um, you said uh, to me earlier, like it's it's important that you implement um, the right amount for the idea before you you try it out on the market. For example, like yeah. like like there's this term MVP, most valuable product, but there's this myth or this conception that um, an MVP is like crappy or bad or badly done. And I really want to debunk this myth because as I know it, it it's far from that wall. What can you tell us yeah. about MVPs? Yeah, I, I love that. Uh, and uh, one one thing, uh, uh, funny, funny story or funny story. Uh, <laughs> Arvid, Arvid Karl, you know, you know him from Zero to Sold, uh, the book. Um, he, he, in one of his podcasts, he said, in, we could also think about uh, instead of MVP, we could also think about MLP, minimal lovable product. <laughs> uh, nice. Yeah, it's it's a nice it's a nice touch uh, that adds to it because when you think about that, um, an MVP is something that solves a problem of your customers. It could be just one problem. It, it solves, it, you know, it makes uh, your customers happy in one aspect of their life. And it just because it, uh, it solves just one thing doesn't mean it's it's uh, not as good as a full blown feature uh, or, uh, or uh, app already. Um, if you make a few customers happy and solve one problem, you have something to sell already. Um, yeah. And as you said, many, many uh, product owners, uh, entrepreneurs and whatever uh, think that the first version has to be perfect already, has to contain a lot of features already because you must be the first on the market and you must have everything and convince everybody uh, that that's the new thing uh, um, uh, on the market. Uh, so yeah, don't, don't think that. Take solve one problem. Get a few, get the first few customers, and then extend it. Yeah, yeah. There's also this book that I like, um, "The Lean Startup" by Eric Ries. Um, again, if you're interested in entrepreneurship, this is a must-read. Like he, he basically talks about that. Like build the, the smallest thing possible. Doesn't mean that the small thing has to be crappy. It has to be solid, robust, and yeah. well done. But it doesn't have to do a million other things. It doesn't have to be super mega customizable 
and everything. Maybe not even customizable at, at all for for the MVP. I, yeah. I, I remember this this uh, graphic. Um, what, what people think an MVP is and what it is. So <laughs> what it is at the end is like uh, like a. a, a a kickboard and then the e-scooter and then a motorcycle and then a car and then a truck. So all of those work and they work well, but for another, like, or in another way, let's say in an, for yeah. another purpose. Yeah. And the thing is, if you, if you ask a few founders uh, what they would change in retrospect is many of them say they would start with less features. Because you have to be aware that the more you add into your product right from the start, the more you have to maintain, the more you have to yeah. improve. And if you focus on a few aspects, um, you can make them, you know, you can make them better at the comp as the competition. Uh, you can optimize them, improve them, and then add new features. I mean, think about many of the startups. Dro Dropbox uh, uh, did not launch uh, with papers. Uh, with paper, uh, 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 whatever, uh, and some other companies, you know, they start with some something, syncing files, um, and then they extend, add new things. Yeah, like the, um, as I understand it, the reason to have an MVP is to test something, to test, for example, even your market. Like, yes. um, is this something that people want? And people look at it and they say, like, no, this doesn't work for me. If it was for instead of video, it was for audio, I would totally love it. And yeah. there, as an entrepreneur, I think it's important to listen to yeah. what people say. Okay, I, I should pivot. So I should change the idea slightly or completely. Maybe you're onto something yeah. very different, but I, I think it's. Uh, important not to lose your why, your why yeah. you're doing something, but you need to be flexible. I think that I think that's the most important thing for in, in this part. Like you have to be flexible and open to to others. Um, yeah, because when you start something, it's like, oh yeah, I, this is awesome, and it will be exactly like this and this and this. And then you put it out there, and people are like, oh yeah, well, this is cool, but if it would like be. That, it would, would then be it like would. this. It would be like a hundred times yeah. more useful yeah. for me. And that, and that's why it's it's important to start with an MVP because then you're flexible enough to do that. You know, yeah. because, because then you can react to those in yeah. to those inputs. Yeah. If you build because, too much, or if you if you as you <laughs> said before, if you scale already too much, it's yeah. very hard to to maintain or well to to pivot to move in another yeah. direction direction. Mm -hmm. And it's even even harder to know you drop features because you also need to be aware of that. You know, failing is is part of this of the journey. So uh, you have to be ready to produce an MVP that might fail, but with the MVP you discover new aspects and you you know turn your product into as you said with pivoting, you turn it into another idea or yep. you drop another you drop one of the features and focus on another one. Uh, and and that works with MVPs because you can do that. You're lean. You're agile. You can uh, adjust uh, your your product. Yes. So now we went a little bit down the rabbit hole of entrepreneurship and MVPs and all of that. So a little bit yeah. away from the ideas, but it, it still has has a lot to do with it. Uh, but like, what is what is like the main message f for like idea are worthless like uh, without execution um like like I, I think it's important to start yes to to like start and not be afraid to um share because nobody will steal your your idea or if someone yes. does they will do it in a crappy way probably or not as you thought <laughs> Yeah, not as you thought it. So yeah, yeah, as you said, start. I mean, make make your idea come true by starting, and uh, that the rest will, play, will the future will tell what happens as soon as you start. But if you don't start, you will never know. You will never yeah, know definitely. if 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 your idea becomes the next uh, unicorn or I don't know solves helps many people solve a, a certain problem in their life. Yeah, and that's the that that's that's uh, why you should start and do it. 
<laughs> yeah. Do it like Nike or Nike. Just do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Exactly. Is there anything else you wanted to uh, to tell the audience about like idea versus execution or um, one last thought about this? I think you 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 also proved that uh, you had this idea of 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 starting this this uh, de um, decoding the code um serious you had this idea and you started and the way you started you gave this idea of value and you because you executed it yeah. and it's now it's it has this unique and now value we're, because we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly exactly <laughs> <laughs> to sum it up you started uh the idea uh as, as has got its value and yeah yes and and if you in the audience feel want to copy the idea just go ahead and maybe you find your passion because this idea is, isn't new either i saw many people doing it before francesco did something like yeah. this francesco um crap i don't know his last name <laughs> francesco from <laughs> the doctor guy Italy. Yeah. Twitter, <laughs> the italian doctor guy the handsome <laughs> italian doctor guy okay. exactly exactly <laughs> yeah, so yeah it doesn't matter it doesn't matter even even if you if you like just before we close this i have to mention this um simon hoiberg is creating a uh, twitter schedule platform with yes. many more features and he he develops it in a very open way he he tweets a lot about what he's doing and, and so on and like even like you just sign up for the service and you could easily copy everything he does but he does everything I, I talk with him and he does everything like with something in mind and he wants to create this unique experience or like he take he wants to take all the pains that twitter uh heavy twitter users have and and so on yeah um so yeah like you could go ahead and just copy it but it maybe it, it could be better but probably not <laughs> But yeah, and but even even though it's a nice exercise, you can just do it just for the sake of learning something new, which is always sure. great. Sure. And fun fun fact is, I had I had uh, this uh, had a note about his product here on my my list too <laughs> because because as uh, um, he's he's not the first one that started a Twitter yeah. schedule tool. I mean, there is more behind it. But when you say uh, you could say. The, switch, uh, the, the scheduling feature is currently the one of the main features. Um, there are other tools, Buffer, uh, um, yeah. and, and many more. But he added a unique touch to it. Um, he he, you know, listened to the first alpha users, yeah. um, put it put into put in uh, their feedback. Then he opened it for beta, and now he's also investing um, uh, the, or time to incorporate the feedback of new users to it, and and. It doesn't matter if there are other startups doing the same thing. He he does it in a unique way. He has it his why, as you said, um, yeah. and 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 builds it in public. He's not afraid of sharing it. He's very yeah. open, as you said. Um, you can write him. You can discuss with him. He's he's super super interested in your feedback. Um, yeah. So there is a, he's a great example of of uh, why it's worth sharing and uh, why it's it's never too late to start uh and then yeah. why execution times idea is bringing you some value or it's creating new value <laughs> yes definitely all right i think we are through here um yes. thank you so much uh stefan for this talk i really enjoyed it it went a little bit more than the time i thought but <laughs> i had such a nice time talking to you <laughs> Yeah, Tito, thank you very, very much. It was a pleasure. All right. Okay, so I hope uh, to see or hear you um, soon, Stefan, and also in my audience. I hope to see you next Monday for the next episode of Decoding the Code. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, Stefan. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you for watching Decoding the Code. A new episode will be available every week. So don't forget to tune in next Monday. For past episodes, check out the website, decoding.show.